Here's a little bit of homework help for unit six, lesson one. You begin by looking at some data for whooping cough. Uh, fun fact about whooping cough, more people break and dislocate ribs from whooping cough than, they, than those that die. So it can be pretty painful. Um, what you're after with this one is you're supposed to take this data table right here and create a new table that orders the data by the year. You'll notice there's a thing that says create and fill in the data table using this button. And quite often maybe you click on that button, but nothing happens. It's because it's not a button. What you're looking for is down here in this box where you enter your answer, you click right here on this one to give you a table. You can start out with a very small table, just a few boxes, four of them. And you could start taking these values and putting in here. I'm just going to look at just the few that we can see on our screen right down here at the bottom of the box. And you're going to put those in order. Now, here's the thing about this. When you put those values in order, if you work through your table like this, And you hit tab it's going to go ahead and just add on more rows down to the bottom but here's the problem with this if you finished your entire table and it looked like this you would not get any points and the reason for it is because you did not label your your columns to tell me what they are and so with the rows what we need to have with this piece is we need to have in this top or at the very top of your stuff that we're after is you need to label with the year and you need what need to label with I think it's number of cases and if you are missing those labels you're going to lose all your points for it and you're going to have to redo it so make sure the label is a really important deal okay the rest of this once you have it all in there that'll be the thing the next thing you have to select whichever years um, in that time period had less than or fewer than 100,000 cases. So go back and read your data, look for all the ones that are less than 100,000 cases, and then make a prediction after that. If you're looking at 1956, would you expect there to be closer to 50,000 cases or closer to 100,000 cases? Make a prediction based on the data that you're watching. Look for trends in the data. Look for spaces where the, the data clearly as we get going closer into the year or higher into the years, we see that the data is decreasing, so you need to be considering those values, okay? Uh, the next part that you had was talking about finding, um, going back for a little throwback to volume. And so when we're talking about volume here, the very first one talks about finding the volume of a cylinder. So when we find the volume of a cylinder, remember that's volume is equal to pi times the radius squared. That's your area of the base, which is a circle, times the height. And from here, it's just simply substituting radius and height and then calculating the value. Don't forget, we're not gonna label with centimeters right now, but when it comes to assessments, you will be required to label it. And then we have to do things in terms of pi. So we're, we're not actually calculating times 3.14. We're going to write this as times pi. Next part of this, part B, it says, what is the volume of the cylinder when the radius is tripled? Well, think about what tripled means. If we're gonna take the radius, the previous radius for this, was four centimeters. So that would mean that it's 12 centimeters, but do I really have to do all that work? I want you to consider this as what is the volume when the radius is tripled. Couldn't I just consider that volume as pi times three times the radius squared? Okay, but do I do it like this or do I do it a little different? Either way, what we're gonna find out is three times the radius times the height or if you're really thinking about all of this, if this is all multiplication, then I technically should be able to take that total volume that I had before and triple it, and then I'll find that volume there. Don't forget to use pi. Make sure you get that answer in there where it's a, a symbol of pi. Final question is the volume of the cylinder if its radius is in half. We can use the same logic thinking that we did for the previous problem right here of if the, if the volume is tripled, then all we need to do is multiply by a factor of three. So if the, if the radius is cut in half, what does that do to the total volume of the cylinder? I'm going to let you think about that. We'll end it on that note. Thanks for checking in. Let me know if you have questions or need more help on the homework. Hope you have a great day.